have anything to add and you say no isn't it weird can you calm down can you take it easy are there no new facts ask them questions make sure you allow them to finish do not focus on one person glancing through your panelists intermittently you're not trying to impose your views on them hi guys welcome back to my channel as you know we've been making series of videos on chivening interview on today's video i'm going to be sharing vital tips for your chivening interview the things you need to take into consideration while at the interview you already know that i have made a video on the early preparation tips for you so i want to assume that you have watched that video and you've taken all the things i said into consideration and you have actually practiced them so on this video it's like you are ready for your interview and these are the things that you should take into consideration while at the interview so that you would have a successful interview so let's get it started oh before then if you're here to subscribe to my channel this channel and you know that you've been benefiting from me don't forget to subscribe it's actually free and it's just about you touching that red subscribe button down this video i actually have lots of tips up to 15 but i know that in the process of this video i might lose count so i'm just going to outline them as we move forward so the very first thing i'm going to tell you is that on your interview day you need to be there on time if it's going to be a physical or in-person interview you need to get to the venue on time and if it's going to be a virtual interview you need to be ready before the time for instance my interview was 1 p.m i was ready by 12 noon i was there trying to figure out what angles it would be okay for me in the camera my background and just trying to calm myself because when you are already ahead of time you are not so tensed you have time to breathe in to calm down you know you're going to be tense so you need a lot of time on your hands to actually calm yourself down so give yourself time if you have an 8 a.m interview wake up early sleep early so that you can wake up early if your interview is in the afternoon do everything you have to do in the morning and get ready on time do not look tired do not look stressed I know you're going to be anxious but when you are seated at your for instance you have a virtual interview you're seated in front of your computer 30 minutes to the interview time you're going to be able to calm yourself down and before the interview starts you are ready and you are less stressed and anxious whether your interview is physical or virtual you need to dress professionally you need to dress in a professional way wear your jacket wear your dress but whatever it is do as if you're going for a physical interview if you were going for a physical interview you won't be flying your hair around as a lady as a guy you're going to comb your hair properly you're going to have that very neat haircut do the same for virtual interview because they are going to check your background they're going to check your outfit they're going to check if you were ready for the interview and not just about the fact that oh it's virtual i can do anything anything doesn't go because it is virtual you still have to be at your very best while at the interview make sure you smile and give eye contact how do you give eye contact in a virtual interview by looking into your webcam that way you are actually looking at the four panelists at the same time if it is a physical interview you're going to be glancing through your panelists intermittently do not focus on one person but maybe when one person is asking you a question it's okay to look at the person but when you are giving your answers please look at different people intermittently and if it is a virtual interview look straight into your webcam consistently because that way you're giving eye contact do not forget to smile okay don't forget to smile they are not going to come out of the computer to eat you up smile but i'm not saying laugh unnecessarily when you smile comfortably it shows that you are not tense it shows that you are confident and i i know how to do that a lot just smile they're not gonna beat you and the thing is when you smile, you take your time. You're not going to rush. Like, if I'm rushing to speak, I would squeeze my face because I'm rushing and I'm trying to meet up. But if I smile, I take my time. I, you know, you will see my facial expression. You know that I'm calm. That's just how it is. Smile while speaking to the panelists so that you will show confidence and they know that you know what you're doing. Whenever any panelist throws a question at you, make sure you allow them to finish asking you the question. Allow them to land. Do not try to collect the words from their mouth as if you already know what they are trying to say. You don't know what they are trying to say. Even if you know, then you need to be calm to allow them to finish speaking to you before you begin to answer. And while answering, do not rush. Calm down, be articulate, 
and you need to take your time to articulate your points in such a way that they will listen they will hear you the funny part okay it's not funny the interesting part is that while you're speaking to them they are taking notes they are writing stuff so you don't have to rush them in such a way that they have to try to tell you oh can you calm down can you take it easy can you repeat what you're saying it's better you take it like one step at a time knowing that they are taking notes and they are writing down stuff other than you just rushing your answers and before you know it they didn't get half of the things you said so you need to be calm you need to speak fluently i'm not going to say speak slowly so that it doesn't become boring i'm not going to say speak fast speak at a comfortable pace okay so whenever you're asked a question always use the star approach when you are answering the question what was the situation what was the task what was the action you carried out what was the activity or action you carried out and what was the result that is the star approach that way you are in line you don't talk too much it helps you streamline your answers because when you're going to start you're going to start off by giving an example of oh this is what happened this was a difficulty we had that was like the situation at hand and that there was a task to be carried out so what was it you did what was the action you took was it something you initiated yourself was it something that was proposed by another team member but you were able to contribute to the team and make that proposal like a reality and then what was the outcome of what you guys did at the end of the day that way your answers are streamlined and you are able to address the questions they asked you for instance if they say can you give us an example where you exhibited leadership skills you're going to start off by identifying a problem for instance okay when i was a class representative in my class i found out that so many students didn't understand what one particular lecturer was teaching the course was a bit technical that was a problem people had challenge so what was the task okay so your task as a leader was okay you had to identify the different ways that you could come in or you could approach the lecturer to resolve that difficulty that barrier that gap and then what was the action that you took maybe you know that the lecturer is a bit difficult so how did you do it maybe you went through the student union or maybe you went to, through your the president of your law society or maybe you set up a meeting where the stakeholder of your class you know you guys approached the lecturer or did you write a letter did you hold a meeting what were the things that you did to you know resolve that problem that is the action you took and then what was the result you're gonna say something like i'm not saying you should go and quote what i'm saying i'm just giving you a scenario so the result is going to be something like at the end of the semester so many people were able to understand the course better or for instance if the initiatives that you guys took um introduced a tutorial lecturer into the course for instance the difficulty people were having was with a particular lecturer so after you guys did what you did a tutorial lecturer was introduced and you guys could ask questions and they could simplify these things for you so at the end of the day the result was that students could understand better and people had better grades that is a star approach that is a, the way you answer your questions so that you will streamline it and you don't talk too much so one thing i did during my interview that helped me was while i was trying to answer any particular question i had to keep that question in mind what was the original question so either say tell us the different ways you engage with other people while i am giving my examples while i am answering the question i try as much as possible to retain the question that i was asked i keep it in mind so that it will guide my answer sometimes you find yourself answering questions and talking so much that you end up forgetting the main essence of the question when you are asked a question first of all think about it what is this question asking me about is it about my leadership skills or is it about my networking skills is it about my ability to solve problems or is it about the impact i have made so while answering the question and citing examples make sure that you keep the original question in mind and then while you are ending your question you will say something like okay the above examples i have given are the ways i have used to impact others or the ways i have engaged with others that way the interviewer knows that oh you are not just going overboard you had the question in mind and you are answering exactly 
what they asked you so i know that you've heard so many people say you should be confident you should exhibit confidence like i said when you smile you're exhibiting confidence but one thing i have to tell you is that you should not be forceful don't be forceful while making your point you're not trying to impose your views on them you're not trying to impose your ideas on them but i'm going to tell you that you should be persuasive how are you persuasive you're persuasive when you give facts tangible examples percentages figures don't fabricate facts or don't make it look like you know everything we don't all know everything so as much as you're making your point try as much as possible to calmly persuade okay don't go and be forceful i'm telling you that this is what i mean of course i'm going to do a video about all the questions i was asked in my interview i'll do that video and i'm going to post it after this video so you need to keep watching you need to stay hooked to this channel so that you don't miss that video it's actually very important so for instance during my interview after they asked me of the knowledge gap in my field and i identified the knowledge gap in my field one of the panel members asked me but these problems have already been here and so so and so institutions have been established to tackle these issues why do you think that they are not enough why can't you join those people to address this problem <laughs> so i already knew that that question was trying to fault the statement i already made i, I don't go and start saying by all means i'm telling you that these people are not doing the right thing no i admitted to the fact that these institutions are there and they are doing as much as they can but because there is still a knowledge gap i feel like i can also contribute and help solve that particular problem by gaining more expertise in that field in fact that when i return i intend to collaborate with these institutions as well so that we can actually address the root cause of the issue so don't go and make it look like your panelist is attacking you or your panelist is trying to make it look like you don't know what you're saying just be persuasive and in whatever you're trying to say don't go and feel overconfident okay don't make it look like you have the scholarship already don't make it look like you are the 100 percent candidate you are looking for yes that is what we are all hoping for but there are some panelists that when you just exude so much pride it turns them off and you don't know who is going to be in your panel so you have to make sure that you don't go overboard while trying to exude confidence and being knowledgeable in your field the only thing that can really help you is exhibiting knowledge when you put so much facts figures and details in answering your questions it shows that you have done your research and it's not about how many thousands of words you can speak in 10 minutes or thereafter of course during the interview the most important questions they are going to ask you are the four essay questions that we asked before they are going to ask you questions to elicit your leadership skills your networking abilities the study in the uk and your future career goals so while answering these questions my strategy and based on the people who mentored me i was advised to use fresh examples examples that i did not include in my essay for instance when i wrote my essays it took like eight months or six months before my chipping interview so as a leader it means that every day i am exhibiting leadership qualities as a good networker it means that i should be able to network every day without having to draw examples from five years back so what i did was i made sure that while preparing for my interview i recalled recent examples of leadership initiatives that had taken in my workplace of networking abilities i had ex exhibited so in as much as i had explained in my essay the kind of things i did to show my leadership skills i went to the interview with additional um, examples so what happened was when i'm asked a question of for leadership or networking I would make reference to what I wrote in my essay. I said something like, like I had written in my essay, I do this, I do that. But in addition, I also do this, I also do that. Recently, this was what I did in my workplace. This was what happened and this was what I did. So you bring in recent and tangible examples so that it shows that you are progressive. You are not just stagnant. It's not about the things you did five years ago. The things you have been doing before, you are still doing it today. It just makes it real that you are a leader and the kind of person that they are looking for so please as much as you're going to make reference to your application or the examples in your application do take note that they have already read this application and it was because they were impressed that's why they are inviting you over to come and explain 
and expatiate on the things that you had written in your essay it's not a place to come and start revisiting everything that you had said in your essay and then no new facts it's going to be boring so if you want your interviewers to be interested in what you're saying give them new facts give them new examples remind them of the, the current happenings around the world and currently the most important thing around the world right now is the covid 19 pandemic so how has it influenced your field how does it come to play you know just make recent examples and that is going to help you okay so the next tip i'm going to give you is that you shouldn't compare yourself with others I remember during my time, after doing a mock interview with about two different prospective scholars, I listened to their points, I listened to their dreams, their visions, and I was so intimidated. At a point, I felt like I wasn't even going to make it because I don't compare to this kind of people. They are doing great stuff. The thing is that Chivning is looking for diverse people in different fields. And the thing is that they recognize if you are just starting in your career or if you have gone a long way in your career. You cannot compare somebody's 10 years experience with your two years experience but what they need to see is the very little impact that you're making in your day-to-day -day life so even if you've met people who you think are so much better than you it doesn't mean that you're automatically disqualified because by the time you start comparing yourself then you already disqualify yourself think about it in my set there are several people who have years of experiences we have doctors we have lawyers we have people who are, who did great stuff people who worked with international organization like i always refer to my friend Hawa. my friend Hawa actually did a project with a particular organization that when she cited it at the interview one of her panel member was part of that project i didn't have such example if i wanted to start comparing myself i would actually feel so bad and not be able to articulate and put out my points out there and be confident about the very little things i have done for myself or i have tried to do to influence other people so be rest assured that chivening is aware of your level of experience of the stage of your career and the impact you have made even if you don't recognize it as being much put it out there show the impact you're making and allow them to make the decision don't disqualify yourself by attempting to compare yourself with other people the next tip i'm going to give you is that you should be aware of what the british government is doing in nigeria or in your country depending on where you're watching me from since i'm in the dispute resolution field i remember citing examples of the pro of programs that the british government were executing in nigeria although they were not like recent programs like programs that were executed like two years back in the peace and conflict resolution sector so that way i'm able to marry my field and the work that the british government is doing in my country it shows that i am knowledgeable i am up to date and i know what is going on in my field and i can actually contribute in that sector which is why i want to be funded by the british government obviously the chimney scholarship is funded by the british government so you should be able to be aware of what the british government is doing in your country i'm not saying that they are going to ask you of this thing but the thing is even if they don't ask you find a way to link it you know i did that in my essay and i also did that in my interview i found a way to link my passion my interest the problems in my field to what the british government was already doing in my country in such a way that it showed like okay i'm supporting the work of the british government and i want you guys to sponsor me so that when i come back i continue to support that work and make your job easier So while answering your questions or while identifying the issues in your field you should not detach yourself from the realities of your field if there are prominent people in your field that are doing great stuff make reference to them and you know be aware of what they are doing and how you can actually tailor the work that you're going to do when you come back towards what they are doing or how you're looking forward to meeting them prominent professors in the university of your choice that you have chosen why you have chosen that course and if there's anybody already working on a similar project that you want to work on that way it also shows that you've done your research i'm going to be bringing more tips and the next video is going to be about the questions that i was asked during my interview i'm not going to hide anything from you guys i'm going to tell you exactly the questions i was asked and not just the questions i was asked i'm going to add additional questions of what other people were asked and how to answer these questions before i go one last tip i have to share with you guys which is very important is do not attempt to cram 
do not attempt to cram your aces when you watch the next video i'm going to share those questions that I, i'm going to share don't go and start cramming the answers and oh okay this is what i'm going to say and all of that when you're regurgitating what you crammed it's obvious they would see that you are not at ease and the thing is at any point that they try to throw you off guard if they ask you an unexpected question you're going to fumble you're going to start showing that oh you're scared you don't know what you're doing and you just crammed and you just came to regurgitate what you crammed it is a very bad practice rather try to understand your point know the rationale around your argument know the loopholes know the gaps know the solutions and whatever information you have to support your point whatever facts and figures you have to support your point have them at the back of your mind and just use your words to explain you don't have to cram that way you are easy going it flows naturally it's not forceful and it shows that you know what you're doing all of these things just goes a long way to promote and give you a better interview experience i'm going to be bringing more tips especially in my next video do well to stay updated and subscribe to this channel so that you will not miss those videos that are coming after this one thank you so much for staying tuned let me know if you like this video give this video a thumbs up and drop any questions in the comment section if you have any and before i go the very last thing i'm going to tell you is that do not leave your interview session without dropping a question without asking a question ask them questions and i'm going to drop the question i asked in my next video so that you get a cue from there but by all means prepare a question that you're going to ask your panelists because it's just weird that you sit there and they're asking you questions over the past 40 45 minutes and then they're asking you do you have anything to add and you say no isn't it weird make sure you ask questions because that way they also know that you're not afraid of them Anyways, I'm going to catch you guys in my next video. Do want to keep watching other videos of mine until I come your way in my next video. Bye. 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 <laughs>